Well, all right, here it is. You know what day it is, you know what time it is. I'm Pastor Bobby D. Hamilton. It is Move Monday. As you can see, I have finished my sunrise run. Of course, you don't see any sunrise, it's so foggy. It was so dark you couldn't see anything, but that's the way life is sometimes. You gotta continue even running in the dark, fixing your eyes on Jesus. <laughs> but listen, it's, it's Move Monday, and this is the day we set aside. And as a pastor of Friendship Community Bible Church, we set aside this day to really move our bodies, to really make sure that we get the blood flowing, we get the heart pumping, that we literally intentionally try to do something that allows us to take care of the temples of, our, of, our, of the Holy Ghost, our bodies. And so I want to encourage you today to just move. You know it's Monday. You always know Monday's coming, the Lord allows, and we want to just move. And I know I'm all sweaty, and, and I'm, I'm a little bit I'm a, I'm a little bit tired this morning because we did a sprint this morning, but that's okay. That's okay, okay. But I want you to sprint. I want you to sprint this morning. I want you to move. I'm not going to call out all the membership and all the pastors and all the extended friends and families and all the guests who watch us every week. But I'm going to call those wonderful school teachers. Thank God for our school teachers. You've been on the front line battling in the midst of COVID and ministering to our kids. And this is your week to be off. This is spring break for many of you around the country. And I just want to be the first to tell you today, move. <laughs> I want you to move. Sister Hill, I know you're off today. I want you to get up and move. Jessica Bagnani, I want you to get up and move. Jonathan Andrew, I want you to get up and move. Brian Beeson, get up and move. Sister Shazante Glasper, get up and move. Sister Laverne Sampson, get up up and move. So to Lori Stafford, I know you're a retired sister, but you're slipping. Yes, you're slipping. And I want you to get up and move. And all the other wonderful, wonderful school teachers, I know you right now turning over again. I know right now you probably are mixing your coffee. And I understand right now you're probably making a run to Starbucks to buy that $20 coffee. But I want to encourage you to, to move, to do something today to exercise your body. You're not in the classroom. And I know you're saying, thank God for that. But I want you to intentionally to pick out something, designate something, some activity day that's going to allow you to burn calories, that's going to allow you to sweat, that's not going to include bluebell or chocolate chip cookies. I want you to move today. Oh, this is a wonderful, wonderful day in spite of all the fall. You know, we've been in this family series, and I want to encourage you as I was running this morning, and even last night, I was thinking again and again and again, just churning in my mind about the message I preached on yesterday. We're in this family series. So I always say, if our faith works anywhere, it's got to work at home. And I was in the family series, and I was talking about the importance of, of us stopping that fighting, about the issue of fighting. I talked about conflict. If you get a chance, go to YouTube and, and look at the message I preached yesterday. It's called Stop That Fighting out of James chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Because the reality of it is that when it comes to our families, one of the most angst, the angst that we have and the emotional eruptions we have are many times tied to conflict. We have conflicts in our families, and we all have flawed families. We all have things, the branches on our family tree that are just not healthy. And we struggle with the issue of conflict. Some of you have family members who live on the same block as you, and you don't talk to them. I mean, you have blood relatives that you have not seen in 30, 40 years. Some of you have parents and grandparents in which you have literally just severed ties with it because of conflict. That's, that's one of the great pains many times I've learned in, in funerals. It isn't so much the casket that's there. It's about the conflict that's there. It's not about the one that's gone. Many times you're struggling with the ones that are still here because there's so much conflict going on. And I know that with families, that's a difficult subject because some of you have valid reasons to say, I'm through with them, I'm done with them. They owed me money, did not pay me back. They lied, they actually divulged my secrets. Some of you have parents who, 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 who gave you away and you say, why did they ever give me away? Some of you were married and you said, until, until death do you part. And you had no idea that, that, that he would ever physically violate you or attack you and, and some of you have been betrayed and, and, and you got a myriad of things. And so you say, Pastor, I don't, you just don't understand. I understand. I understand that conflict is real. I am not trying to minimize it or deny it, but I am saying this. If our families are going to get healthy, if we're literally going to be able to be have a good time and enjoy the climate, the climate in our homes, then we're going to have to be able to directly face this issue of conflict. It's been said there's mostly three kinds of people. It is those who are peace fakers. They act like everything all right. They just go along. There's a conflict, and they, but, they, but they're faking it because it's not all right. And there, there's peace breakers. There are those who intentionally, they're so self-centered. They're so roguish in their behavior. They would intentionally disrupt and destroy for their own good. They don't care who, they're, they're like a bull in a china shop. They would just rush in and destroy everything. And, but there's also, there's those who are peacemakers. They're willing to take the initiative. They're willing to really stretch out. They're the ones that are willing to really say, 
say, forgive me, or let's sit down and talk. Let's reason together. Which one are you? Are you a peace breaker? Are you a peace faker? Are you a peacemaker? Which one are you? Because so many times when it comes to our families, I found and just talking to so many people around the country is that many when it comes to family, they just say, leave that alone. Don't, don't, don't touch, don't rub, don't agitate that old scab. But I'm saying that if it's not healthy, if it's not healthy, it's going to let the, the sword and it's going to ooze out with all the venomous poison and all the stain. You have got to inject, you've got to inject the word of God. you got to inject the principles of God and even surround yourself with the people of God. I want you today to understand that God wants you to take the initiative. In James 4, James starts talking about, listen, I know you're in conflict, but what is your part? What part did you play? What contribution? He's not saying that, that, that it was all your fault, but he's saying first examine yourself. Where are you in the conflict? Maybe you didn't cause the conflict, but maybe the way you responded to the conflict is contributing to the perpetuation of the conflict. Conflict. So what can you do today? It's Move Monday. I know you're going to move your body. You're going to, you're going to walk. You're going to ride your bicycle. Some of you are going to run. Some of you are going to pump your weights. Some of you are going to do yoga and Tai Bo. And some of you are going to do some, some, a myriad of things, Pilates. You're going to do some great things today. Oh, yes, you are. You're going to go out in your garden. Some of you are going to do push-ups. I heard you're doing push-ups. You're doing a myriad of things. But here's my question. Here's the bonus question. What are you going to do about the conflict in your family today? You're the one hearing it. You're saying, Pastor, talk to them. No, you're the one hearing it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing from the word of God. You've heard, you've heard it. So what are you going to do about it? Who are you going to start with today? Who are you going to designate today? Maybe you could have a healthier marriage if you would say, baby, listen, I got something I haven't said to you that I really need to say. Maybe your dating relationship could, could stop being so sordid and so stained and so shady. If you say, you know, I need to really have an honest conversation with you. This really hurt me. Maybe you get on the phone today and call one of your relatives or FaceTime one of your relatives and say, you know, for a long time I need to talk to you. You hurt my mama. You hurt my daddy. And I've been carrying that hurt. I personalized that hurt myself. Or maybe someone in which it's an inheritance issue. They, 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 they supposedly left you an inheritance. And guess what? what? You never inherited inheritance. And I'm saying you've got to take the initiative. You've got to clean your heart. You've got to recognize. That's what Jesus talks about worship in Matthew 5. He said, when you go to worship, he said, listen, check your relationships. If you realize someone has something against you and you against them, leave, leave your gift at the altar. Go be reconciled. Then let's come worship God together. Too many of us are before the Lord's throne on Sundays and Wednesdays on Saturdays. We're before the Lord's throne and there's so much disunity, so much dysfunction and we're okay with it. And the Lord is saying put your hand down put your hand down and pick up your feet and go you do your part to try to reconcile i want to encourage you today i know it's a scary thing i know you, you you're trench you say oh they're gonna say some stupid stuff to me and i might get stupid too no you don't have to get stupid with me we, we talked last week about the part of watch your mouth but i am saying listen you're gonna have to trust god you can't make them change. You can't make them reconcile. But you can sure make your way and obey God. So where are you going to start? I want to hear from you. I want you to call me. I want you to, I want you to write. And if you've got any questions, feel free to call the church. I'll talk to you about it. And walk it through. It's a painful thing. I'm not preaching to the choir. I'm not preaching to those. I've been there. I'm, I've been there myself and could be there again. But I do know that God blesses. God blesses. It. God blesses those who are willing to obey when it comes to the area of relationship. I want want your family tree to get healthy and remove the stain and remove the bugs that for far too long have allowed your tree to be bent. Oh, God wants to bless you today. Have a great day. Go move. Go to YouTube. Watch the message from yesterday. Join us on Wednesday night at Friendship and go tell somebody what you heard today right here on Move Monday. Wow, I need some water.